Hello, we're back. Um, so, yeah, today we're going to have hopefully a short session. Um, well, I definitely don't have as much time as, as I had last time. And I thought it was going to be a short session. At the end, it was a little bit over one hour, um, which is um, really not short. <laughs> um, so, Today we're going to continue with the stuff we were doing yesterday. Well, the last session that I was uh, that was yesterday um, with uh, a star a star blind, which is uh, my current um, ZX Spectrum game for the AK for now. Um, so yesterday we go to the point where we were doing well, the last session. Uh, we got to the point where we do the re we did the refactor uh, in order to um, support multiple maps and um, and it, it almost worked but it didn't work and it's because we, there is a bug here and shortly after I finished the session I was having a shower before going to bed and and uh, yeah this is not quite right so. Basically, what is failing here is that um, we move in. Um, so, MW is the is the map with uh, that we get from the JSON file from the tile, and um, we are using four bits per tile, which means that in a byte we include two two tiles. So one of them is X, you know, this is the variable we used to move in the in the X axis and uh, X plus one. So this is, this is not right. I don't know why, uh, maybe, did I write that on purpose? I'm not sure. Maybe it was part of the, of the old code when I did, when I did the refactor don't know but this is this is why it should be so we have to um, to to uh, process all the all the tiles in in the map and we need to increment use a step of two in the increment so we can you know use two in one go tile I a tail B here there's a check where <clears throat> Uh, with this actually this is not right <laughs> uh, this is still some bits here from the refactor so this is my file uh, yeah this is because let's take a look to to the map to map editor to tile so here we can see that we have 16 so if for some reason I go to the map and I get for example this tile and I put it here that's in a different tile set because I define in one in one row 16 tiles so that, that wouldn't work so um, oh by the way I changed the arrangement of tile and few other things so I don't have to move the uh, the webcam so it doesn't doesn't uh, cover stuff that is kind of important because uh, you know right now it's covering a bit of the map but that's I think that's fine right so let's hide this so basically uh, yeah so this is checking that we are not mixing tile sets and yeah, we get the tie set, which is basically divided by 16. We get the number of the tie set and and so on. It is how we convert the tie set and we pack things and that's fine. But there are a few things here. For example, my size. Yeah, because um, when I did the, the refactor first, I thought, well, let's do it for one map and then we add both maps. But just shortly after I got one, one map working, I basically added the other one. So
so so it was so let's basically ooh, let's, um, uh, yeah so basically improve a little bit the error messages because otherwise we don't know which map is the one that is causing the issue in map um, right and again ooh, here so map file yeah that's all right so now you should report the file the file name of the map here cool so yeah so we made this change so so let's touch the map so make the text that here has changed to generate the new one and yay so this works okay now and everything should be fine so let's move around a little bit let's kill this guy <laughs> though we don't need that for testing but yeah i think i think this looks okay right so at this point um we have finished with the refactor we started uh uh the previous session that is basically looking at tile so instead of having one big map and split that in in rooms what we're going to have now is multiple maps each map in a single file which is more the style we need in for this project so i close that one because you know for testing um what we did is here in data we have the map and we load in the map twice so what i'm going to do is um this is complicated because I don't know what I'm going to do yet. So, so calling it map one, map two is going to be confusing eventually. But um, for now, we're going to do this, and it's the same map, but we're going to change that. So, um, so here. So it's going to be map one and map two. And actually we can say maps and we can say maps and say map one, map two. It's very lucky I will change the names. And then So let's go to the map renderer. So it should be fine now, but basically, um, okay, so this should load two maps and they should be, they should be different. So let's go to tile again, and then we open. So this is map one. This is the one we were testing so far. And let's open map number two and this one we're going to get rid of all the entities entities i think for now because it's just it's just for testing i mean i remove also the doors and we're going to get yeah that's the right one so we're going to get this there is there must be a way of doing the fit yeah exactly just like that and we're going to make a room here something like this like this yeah 
something like that. Which is not really important. This is just for testing. Um, oh, that's not the one I want to zoom in. This is the one. So, so tile is really, really good. I really like it. And there is a way that you can actually use this to define to define a terrain. So you don't have to draw it like that. You just can say you can paint and um, tile will use the right tiles. Uh, but for now, I'm not going to use that. You know, there is some work you have to do in order for that to happen. So for now, what I'm going to do is just well, they have, I have limited amount of tiles. I don't think I can do all the combinations. So in here, for example, I can use that one, but I don't think I have the type of tile that would be exactly the one we need here, I think. Do I have that? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Cool, great, that's perfect. Now, I'm doing this on purpose because what I'm going to do next is, um, I mean, at the moment we have this map. Uh, our guy starts here, it's a fixed address. Um, probably, um, let me think. Um, I think that probably we should have an entity, which is not an entity, but yeah, uh, it will be exactly the same. It's just that we can use that to uh, kind of inject the the address where we're going to put the player in this map well not in this map on the start of the game uh, that it will be in this map uh, we could be you know put a new entity like you know could be something like this and say you know say start oh start and so when testing, we can just is just um, oh, what's going on? Oh, this is not working properly. All oh, right, so we can just move it around, and if we, I want to start here or start over there, it's easier than going to the code and change that. So uh, something we probably I probably should do, or I can do now. Well, let's leave that for later. If we have time, we'll do that today. Uh, because before that, what I have planned for today is just um, link the maps. Because for now, we know that we're generating two maps. But, I mean, this, it should be fine. But I still want to, I mean, looking at the generated maps here, so we have the maps and then we have one array that basically it will give me the addresses of the maps in memory. So, I mean, this is exactly the same stuff I had before. So it should work. Let's do something first. Let's comment this which is basically fix better error messages yeah and then these two start these two things we can add this this and the rename and we can say this is um, two testing maps. Yeah, in the last session I was a little bit confused when I was doing, no, it was the last session, the previous one, I was doing a comment that I was a little bit confused, but by this is because <laughs> I upgraded the plugin and it looks different suddenly and I was like, what? Yeah, I was expecting something different. Now, this is a plugin that is called Fugitive so you can use git uh, from within beam and it's really good uh but i after the grade i haven't really 
used it because I did the raid the other day and uh, for whatever reason I it was a surprise like what this just changed suddenly <laughs> okay so um, so we have two maps and we want to link them which is the plan we have for today finishing the uh, the multiple maps and then having a way of linking them um, so we have a list of entity types here um, and to link uh, to link the, the different maps there are different ways of doing that um, what I did for example in um, the down of kernel is that is a you will find that there is a an entity that is a, a teleporter that you can basically get your ship on uh, touching it and then press down and enables the teleport and you go somewhere else um, that's a way of doing it the other way is you know when you get to the limit of the screen then I did that and I moved you to the next map to the next room sorry uh, on the other side so basically there is a transition between rooms but in this case I'm not completely sure how I'm going to do it because First of all, there is a scroll, and um, I guess I could have some different tiles so you can enable like a lift. Well, I mean, the teleporter idea is not bad. Uh, why not? I mean, you could have a teleporter. I mean, we can do whatever we want, really. So there could be a teleporter. Um, but originally, I was thinking more like. Um, making the map look like uh, some sort of a spa ba space base um, uh, I made a game uh, I think it was in 2004 that it was called Escape from Colony 8 that I like the idea of the you know some ideas that I use in the game but for you know I it was one of the, my first games for the Specky and it was not really I was not doing things properly, I ran out of memory and it was a very short game and it has few issues but uh, I like the idea though of having a base like that um, so maybe it could be like, I thought it could be like a lift that you can move between levels so the base is moves like some sort of tower maybe so I don't know, I like it to make sense in a way um, so I thought that perhaps some sort of elevator, but then not sure if I want to add one extra key or some sort of combination to enable the elevator. So I was thinking more like having a special tile, perhaps that when you touch that, you enter that. You, I change to a different screen where I can show like a simple map of the base and you can select the level you want to go maybe I like that, that idea uh, and for example to get to a specific level you need to have like this you know the credentials which is um, I think we have the graph here yeah it's like a card or something so you know you can use that to have some sort of puzzle so you need to get the card in order to get to a specific level so you can get something else to go. um so in that case it's just entering but then the problem is that when you go to the other level you can't really be on the same tile where you should be entering right you should be outside because otherwise the entity will detect you are inside and then it kind of mm. so I'm not sure I mean I'm going to implement a very very basic one that it will work similar to the way we do when you change room on a flick screen so if we get for example to I don't know to let's get rid of this alien I don't like it let's put it here and we're going to we're going to change the link the alien to uh, be a uh, uh link don't know it's a link really yeah it's map link link map link map link right map link 
So we have a map link here. So basically, when you get enter into the map, we will detect that we're touching it, and then uh, we will go to to a different map, map link here. So entities paste in here, and that's how we do it. I think. So you go like here because we know what is the direction you're facing. We can put you. I don't know. I'm still not sure. I can put you down maybe here, so you don't appear just over the map link. Maybe. Or also we could have some sort of state, so you have to leave the map link and enter again in order to enable that. I mean, let's make the easiest, the easiest way, which is you get in here, you get out on the other side, and based on the on what direction you're facing when you get in. So in that case, if you get up here, then you should go. Actually, I mean that's a different way of doing it. Let's let's take a look how we can make this look like. So we can have this uh, for now. We can use that type for now and put it like here and then come here and then put it here and we can make something like this, which is the equivalent on the bottom of the page, on the bottom of the map, just like that. And we can leave that because it really is not causing any trouble. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. I'm not completely sure. Um, so let's. Oh, sorry. Oh, this one. Why is. Why has selection on that one? Can I just unselect? New. That's not the one. Oh, because we more ma ah, ma more. Okay, all right. Unselect. So, so for now it's going to look like that. We can make this style to look different, and it will be nice because it will make like you are. Yeah, I mean. That could work too. I mean, all the idea of the lift is just an idea. <laughs> so at the end, it's not that much when you want to do that, you know, the stuff that you manage to do, which may not be, you know, sometimes you try to do something really, really nice, really smart, and it's going to be great, and it's going to be amazing. And then, you know, there's no way you can actually make that for whatever reason, because you can't draw the graphics or because you know, technically that's completely crazy to make it that on an AV machine. I don't know. There are different ways, different reasons why something may not work. It looks okay, I think. Oh no. We can change that tile and make it look nicer. So it's like you know, it's you know disappearing or you know we can even make some some sort of indication that so it could be just a way of linking different maps being the same level. I think that's probably okay. Right. So with this, we have the map ready and we have an entity that is called map link. So these are the entity types. Oh, there is a star here, but it's not implemented. I think I don't recall implementing this. It's like the, the terminal. Yeah, there are some things here that I put in here, but I'm not. So this, the order of this is is important. So map. Uh, I use case on the map, uh, camel case, but I don't think that's really important because when we get the name, if I'm not mistaken, of the entity, yeah, I get the name is, I, I convert that in, in lower case because it's easier, basically just in case I don't remember to put the case and it doesn't work. So, right, so we put the map link after the terminal. So, uh, 
So I have here what I call, I call entity configuration, which is, well, it's just a name, but yeah, I have the things here, but um, I have the stuff here, but I didn't implement that, I think. So after the terminal, because we're going to put the map link Right, that's correct, map link. Uh, then, right, so I have this ed config include file because I don't, I, uh, the logic of the entity system is implemented on a different file. And I don't want to touch that file. Um, so I compile less things. I mean, this is a, reasonably powerful machine but SDCC is not really amazing so uh, it can be quite slow um, so it's a good idea to split things and don't compile, compile too many things so here we have spawn entities and yeah there is no start yet although I have the placeholder is not implemented so let's implement the map link um so i mean it would be nice if we put it them in order although it's not really important in, the, in when you're using the case here so map link and then i have this convention here that that basically um oh right so this is going to change so when we when we uh, enter the entities in the map data, what we save here is always the same. The type of an entity uh, that it uses the highest byte here to be zero or one to you know it's a flag. It could be. Uh, which way is facing an enemy, for example, but it could be other things. In the case of the door, it could be if the door is open or closed. I mean, it's just it's just a flag, which means that we can only have 128, 20, 27 different entities, which is probably enough, right? Um, then we save an uh, entity ID that we use for the persistence and, you know, X and Y. So it's always four bytes. And this is what we're doing here, four bytes. But for the map link, we're going to need more. We're going to need more things. Um, we need to know which map we're going to go. And, and, and the location, X, Y, where we want to place the player the player when he gets out of the map link, right? So we need the map and we need X and Y. So in here for the map link, see, yeah, see, there is a special here. So we have an example for the text entities. I already had plans to, to encode extra, extra things really. So, so special map link entities and basically if name is map link um, I think um, name is lowercase already right mm. Yes, it's lowercase. Excellent. So if the name is map link, then one thing one thing I like about um, about tile is that you can have any custom properties you want. So you can do whatever you want with it. And um, those properties are really easy to read if you export to JSON. I mean, it has other formats. Uh, you can export to the native format, but I think JSON is very easy to to read and parse especially from Python. So 
I mean, if you're using JavaScript, well, it's completely trivial because JSON is just JavaScript. So um, I, I'm using JSON. But sometimes when they change the version, they might change a little bit uh, the stuff that you get in the JSON file. But it's not very difficult to um, to update. So okay, so the custom custom properties we need to know where are we going right so we probably need to say we're going to and it's going to be string and we're going to say map to so what we're going to map to and then so we're going to map to um and uh we're going to map to actually for now we're going to remove this one no we're not going to remove this one let me think so i could be setting the, the coordinates here so we know that looking at, at the tiles this is 10 12 no 11 12 so can we store that? Well, it can be really annoying to enter those numbers. What I did in, for example, in kernel, that it works really well, is that you can go to the entity, and the entity has a ID, which is 32 here. So instead of putting the location, what I did is you go to and just say the ID, because it was in the same, uh, JSON in the same map file but in this case it's a different map so the IDs are not going to be the same uh, mm -mm -mm. all right so I think I'm going to store so I don't need this one for now and now uh, we're going to store the 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 tile yeah let's let's do that and and I can change my mind later so this is is it starting on zero? Yes, so this is 11, 12. So this is the map. M to Y M. Yeah, I mean, this is wrong because it should be an integer, not a string. So let's remove that too and make string to map map to JSON and to x integer. Do we say eleven twelve? My memory is not very really good. Yeah, I mean you look at the corner, it says eleven twelve. So that's it. So two x. 2y12 so that's 11 12 and that's the map we're going to go and we can leave it like that without the entity mm, this map is not going to have entities that might might be a problem i'm not sure if it will crash so let's do something let's get a slime here and just just in case right <laughs> Yeah, so we have an entity. Yeah, because I'm not completely sure what will happen if there are no entities. It may crash. So for now, to make things simpler. Right, so when I go here, I know that I need to go to map to JSON and those two numbers. Right, so to map, to X, and to Y. So those are properties. Then now we need to manage in or map importer. So we can do uh, to map and then get property equal get property uh, the current object and then to map and the default is non. Do we care about that? So this get property is a function I make here to make things simpler. And actually, 
um, this is actually doing more than it should because um, currently I'm using the latest version of Tile. I compiled that myself, but before I was using the version uh, that is shipped with uh, Debian and it's older. So they have changed the format. So in this way, I can support both versions. Uh, which is, I mean, I'm probably going to use the, the newest one. It doesn't make sense to, to keep super for both, but uh, when I was doing the conversion, it was useful, so I, I left this here. Um, so it's basically you pass the object, then yeah, it finds the object name. No, that's not fine name. This get property. The object gets the name of the property. Yeah, gets the property and you get the value back. Excellent. So with this is to map and then to X to Y and to X to Y if any of this to map to x or to y no that's not what we want we want to check if one any of this is none so if not all yeah but if two y hmm. Wow, this is I, I, just ignore me. Let's make it simple. Which <laughs> is uh, the same. Then uh, map link with. We call it math file, right? Yeah, and parser error exit. So, so we want to be sure that that is correct. Then, right. So the map is a string, but we probably need the index in the in the map map in the list of maps. So, what are we going to do here? Is instead of using math file. We're going to do this a slightly different. Um, so we're going to change map file to be map data, and then map file here. And instead of because we store in the output, but we don't have the maps to look at them, so I need to know which map and when we process in map one we still don't know anything about map two so we don't know what is the index that we're going to have right so but we have that in the arguments so hmm right okay so let's keep this the way it was being map file and then map index and it's going to be a dictionary and then in here we're going to map index is going to be is going to be name no it's just that's silly the map index is a list Yeah, right, just like that. It's going to be a list, please. Yeah, because this these are arguments are from uh from argument parser, so it may not be a list. I want it to be a list. So map index is going to be a list. Um so here it's going to be a list. And we just can get the index of the name of the file in the map index and that's fine so that will work 
So in here, to map, that map, this is the name of the map. So map index index off. Whatever is this? Is that correct? I've been priming other things lately. See, it's not index off. It's index off. It is index off new. Hmm. Ah, it's just index. Oh, so disappointed right now. I don't remember these things. That's the problem. If you don't use a primary language, you're going to lose. Mm. Anyway, so map index, you get the index. So that will give me the index of the map. So we know the map, the X and the Y. And this is not correct and it may not work. Instead, we're going to get this in a different place because yeah, it, the property is, is known, it won't work. We need to see that it might, you know, all of this has to be different of known, so we have to find them, right? And now, when we find them in the map uh, entities, what we do is we extend with the extra properties, which is the map index, uh, index of to map, which is the name of the map. Well, we're going to x to y and that's it that should do it um now x and y it is x and y what it is because x and y is we use that as an as um so it is x y in 16 per 16 tiles here we see that we were using the tile width with the 16 it was 8 so we're using character so we can place things um, in between two tiles let's say so yeah I think I did this I did it like that because of that so this is going to be really half of it And we're using the the no yeah, how is called that. This is a division that you discard the decimals basically. Right. So with this, we're going to include the extra fields in the in the map link. So let's go here so well this doesn't exist at all but also the map in it doesn't have access to the entity list and it has to process three extra parameters so we need to think about that anyway we need the map link right so um, Let's take a look to, for example, the door, maybe. So it has in it update well and open in some things, but that's not really what we're looking for. Yeah, I mean, it looks weird. It looks like I don't remember the code I wrote. And um, well, I started this in Christmas, so it's been a few months and yeah i've been doing other things so yeah sometimes you don't remember the code you wrote and you had to look at it and then you look like what 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 is oh which is kind of what happened last session when i was refactoring the python code but everything comes back so the door in it is basically setting some tiles and stuff we may want to do that if we want to change the tile. Um, although the map will be internally, logically, the map will be the same. It will be, you know, free space that you can step in. Um, so we may change that. So having the the init in there can be useful. 
then there would be an update and when a door open doesn't make any sense right i mean we could have like a follow link maybe yeah let's we can do that so let, let's use this one uh, as a template map link edge so we open it and we change some includes um, instead of it or it's going to be it map link map link yeah and this is map link now and this update and we don't need this for now although it's going to be very similar because it's very likely that we're going to set the tile in a similar way and i will have defined here what is the tile we're going to use for that so that's going to be very similar um and um shall we use this as a template this is not going to be like this I'm going to change that. This is very likely that it's going to need. So, so if we go to init, uh, yeah. So init map link because basically, I mean I like in this way because the main is completely. Well, kind of stupid, although it's doing some stuff here, but I would like to avoid include code here. So I don't want this switch to get complicated because the compiler is not going to do a very good job. So I could pass a pointer to the pointer here to the ends, or maybe return a copy of the pointer. And then, yeah, but in a way that would be nice if all of them did the same, but it would be a waste. So. For now, I think I'm going to do it here. I think, although it's exposing. See, this is just thinking for nothing because, um, I mean, this is an AB game, really. <laughs> I'm not going to maintain this code forever or anything. So, um, I mean, it, it has to work first of all, and it has to work. Um, the way you want it to work um, but to be honest uh, all right to be honest it doesn't need to be really uh, amazing because So do we need this? Uh, we don't need the beeper. We need to know about the map, some definitions. We're going to use stuff from the ZX library. We need the player because we need to check if we toast the player. So that's probably okay. Um, this is going to be map link and the update map link is going to be there too. So we need to set the map link update then we don't need this at all for now and in the update um, you know if, if no player check then return i guess and here we do the change map maybe no not really and we see why i mean we can't really do it like that but let's put it like that for now right i don't know why is what is this oh because i i had the synthetic enabled remember excellent yeah, it's failing to find that library because it's included in a different place and that includes and it's complaining about things. I don't want that for now. I, I tried to enable that for Python in the last session, but it didn't work. I don't know why, but definitely I don't want that running with C uh, at the moment. It's just a syntax, you know, it's a linter. It does some things, syntax checks and some stuff as you write the code. And for certain languages, it's really useful when it works, but 
uh, in this case we don't really need that right so um, so we have this stuff here ready and we probably need to include the entity maybe here map link uh, and then here right so we have to save we have to save three things uh, no entities is what we're looking for now so this is a structure that has all the style we have in the entities so it has the type of entity the id in the case that is persistence uh, we have x and y coordinates we have parameter that it could be anything we want a delay a frame so i see these three we're not going to use them so we can repurpose them i'm not going to make the structure larger especially you know this is those are generic names for things but it's very likely that we're not going to use them so in this case we incremented already the point of the entity so uh, when i generate a new entity there is a global variable because performance uh, that is called et new and it has the latest one we created so so we're going to use et new and then we can have for, for example in param um, the first you know we move four so we know it's going to be six so we move four so it's already pointing to the sorry it's already pointing so it's four why is four one, two, three, four. Hmm. All oh, right, because it's a type. <laughs> the type with the param is the parameter, which is the first one. We don't use that. We're not going to use that for in in the link. Then yeah, so it's four. So we moved the pointer already. So now zero is the destination map. Oh, let's call it the same that we use in the other place so it's so map x no 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 it's two map two map two x and we're going to put that on delay because yeah we we're using the variable in the structure and then y and then now we move the pointer three and we call we call to map link that it does the initialization so potentially we could make this cleaner like putting ends here with the current pointer like this so we don't pass a pointer to a pointer um Let's see how it looks. Um, so map link. So this should be a pointer to the entities and just like that. And we probably need to include here. Yeah, I mean, I, I know that, you know, in this platform, I know what is an unsign, uns, unsigned uh, chart, for example, or what is an integer. I know the size. Uh, I could be using that, but I found more readable, you know, that I'm using an unsigned integer of eight, 8 bits. So I'm using a standard integers for that, which probably it's not really that important but so map link c here the signature has changed so it's going to be like this and we can just get this in here uh, um, 
and then we can do this like this and it's going to do the same thing and this one looks cleaner so all the logic related to the map link is in the map link source files and the main is kind of clean so we can say that has extra how do we call that has extra data right so in this way we basically say that the function that is going to do the update of these entities here and we got the values and uh, we can even try uh, we can even try to compile this oh man sometimes what's going on what is doing <laughs> Right? Why is. Mm, let's see. I'm not sure what I did here. Anyway. Right. So, to start with, um, yeah, I forgot some stuff in the. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, let's redo this. Yeah, I had to focus on the other window when I did the rotation. But. Uh, yeah, it's because get properties part of the class, so it should be like this. Yeah, I'm trying to get used to use um, Tmax, but I'm still getting used to it. So sometimes. It gets a little bit too weird. Yeah, I can't really use that. Anyway, so it's complaining about the main 20. Oh, what is this? Oh, right. This is because, yeah, when I generate, I probably should change that. When I generate the, uh, if, if there is a problem in the Python code that generates the include that I use for the map data, uh, you, uh, it generates an include that is invalid, but make is not going to generate that again because the file is newer than the origin dot the JSON map. So it should change that. That's not correct. So it makes it forced me to touch the file to change the date. Anyway, I mean, I, I really like working with make and I like having a completely automated pipeline that I can just, uh, you know, I can just run make and build everything in one go. But anyway, um, yeah, this is because this should be um, Like this, I think is that. No, it's still not. It's because this is a constant. I don't. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's because it's constant. It probably doesn't really matter in the specy because basically uh, everything is memory. But if we were running this on the MSX and it was a cartridge, I really like doing that. I don't want to change. A memory address that it shouldn't be changing right so we can run this and it shouldn't make any difference uh, because well the entity should be there and it should be updating something should happen here uh, we can actually do some debug why not uh, no I can go there mm. Let's do no oh, live live uh, set x h. We can use, for example, set the border border to 
blue. That's my debug color. <laughs> right. So if I go there, it should touch the player and the border is blue. Yay! So that works. So the entity is there. We can't see anything and it doesn't have any effect whatsoever. But the border is there. Now, um, let's try to wrap this up as quick as we can because I wasn't expecting to go that long. You know, I need to get better at doing things, explaining things. Because this is definitely no work for one hour. <laughs> right. So the first idea is, well, you know, if we detect that we touch the player, then we change the map right here. And we can't really do that. Why? Because when this map link is being updated, this is inside a entity loop. And uh, the entity loop, you know, there's an... I don't know if this is even readable. Yeah, it is quite readable because it's C. So, so the update entities loop here. So this is happening in the, in the middle of the loop. So we're going through a list of entities. If we change the map, the map will remove that and spawn things, but we're still inside the loop. So it's not a good idea to change those structures as we are reading them. Uh, I mean, you could be doing some tricks like break the loop, and uh, but it's complicated. It's difficult to get right. We shouldn't be doing that, and we're not going to do that. I know we shouldn't because, yeah, you're right. I did it once, and then I realized that it was probably not worth all the trouble. So we did entities, we did the player, draw the maps, draw the entities, draw the player, and update the screen. So that's what we do in every loop, you know, plus getting reading the controls so the player can move around and do things. Um, so uh, after the update, what we can do is probably have a variable here if map change. Right. We can use that as a flag because the first map is zero, so we can't really use zero as a flag. Uh, then, right, we change the map. And um, it's probably okay we change the map in here because we only need to init the map, and init the map will init, init all the entities, and because the next thing we're going to do is draw, Although we lose in the first update, but it's fine. It will be equivalent to the first time we draw everything when we need the map zero, right? So yeah, we need that variable. This is going to be quick. So in here, in main, we're going to have, yeah, we're going to have a variable that's going to be a map change. Oops map change and then map change when we start is going to be that so we don't change map and then well you know if it's map there is a map change what we're going to do wait a second no that is not going to be that's not what we want to do really it's more like this. Why? Because the entity knows. Hmm. Well, I mean, why not? We can do it properly. So, so we also need to know. map change and then map new x map new y 
and probably probably the direction we hmm, the direction we're facing my problem here is that the update in update entities we know that we need to change the map so we send the map change to the map do we want to change but then we can't really set the player x and y because those shouldn't be live until we actually change the map the map so so map new pxo player x so my new py map new p well for now we can leave it like that even if we mm, no because we need to swap we need to know where the player is facing and we need to swap that so when we are going up we're facing up but then when we go to the next map we're still facing up. Yeah, we don't need to change that. Excellent. That makes things a wee simpler, which is not a lot, but that's fine. So, map new a player x. Okay, so basically, um, let's me let me double check uh, the the player variables are those. Yeah, px. So. So px equals uh, map new px, and then the same thing for y, and then init map map change, and map change is back to be no map change, right? And then. Uh, in map link C basically if we don't touch the player continue but if we do so we go back forward and then map new uh, px is going to be um, all right so when we are inside the the when we are inside the, this loop, the current entity is has a point of the structure in in et it right, and also <laughs> this is okay. So so we have the pointer, but then get into an element. Uh, so a, a, one part of the structure through a pointer. With, uh, I, I, I mean, SDCC could be better, but the truth is that to do that with set 80 is quite expensive. So instead, I do here something that is looks a little bit crap, but you know, it's a trick and it's way faster and it's way simpler and it converts to assembler very efficiently, which is basically I have pointers in the you know, iterator x, iterator y, pointers to the structure to the fields in the structure. So, because it's a pointer and we want to the actual value, we can do, uh, so we get that delay is x and y is, ooh, this should be framed, right? Yeah, but when we create a new entity, it's new, it in here, we are not in, the, in this loop, so it's not available frame and then map change it was map change yes map change is the parameter right and that's it and if we want to be sure that we're not going to you know this is going to happen only once and it's going to happen only once we can destroy the entity because you know we destroy the entity on this map and if we come back to this map the, the if we don't set persistence so the entity is gone it will be created again so we can destroy it 
so we sure that it's going to be run. But anyway, we know it's not going to be it's not going to happen twice because we update the entity, we set everything, and before the next frame, we already change the map. And with the next with a new map, with a new map, it shouldn't uh, it shouldn't be there. So basically, let's go. <laughs> Will it work? Of course close so we shouldn't be here why are we here this is quite suspicious really mm -mm 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 -mm. why are we here let's take a look to init map because we set the viewport well I mean this is something perhaps we shouldn't be looking at without explaining it. It's quite complicated. And when you're working with the scroll, you have basically two different sets of coordinates. Well, I think I'm managing three sets of coordinates. One of them is the screen coordinates. The other one is the map coordinates. And then you have the world coordinates, which is the complete. Uh, so anyway. Yeah, I was looking at this because maybe we doing something with the with layer X and Y, but we don't do anything. So this is not right. Player X and player Y. So it's two two. So one two three one. I don't understand. So oh, sorry, you don't see what I'm looking at. I'm looking at tire. So that is four one zero one two. No, see one two, three four. I don't understand. When we start, when we start the game, what is the actual position we have? Let me see. Yeah, actually, you might be able to see the emulator on top of, of tile. Do you? No, you don't. Anyway, here, here we are. So we started on this corner. That corner over there. So that corner is zero one two zero one two i'm confused why am i doing zero so zero one two zero one two so that's two two that's two two and um what are we doing here? Uh, I don't understand. Anyway, two two. Well, that kind of makes sense. No, that doesn't make sense. I think it's because yeah. All right. See, I know what's going on. Yeah, exactly. So this is to do because it's two two, but um, we multiply by two because, or or actually, my map my my coordinates. Do you remember we were talking that the ties in in on the map is sixteen per sixteen, but we use an eight per eight, so we can have some granularity, extra granularity in there. So I think what is happening here is that that's why we get instead of to do is four four and here hmm, let's double check first that that we i'm not doing something wrong here so x and y which is delay and frame this one looks okay there's no problem with that and looking at the Python code, which is probably where we're doing it wrong. So 
2x is actually 11 and 2y is 12. So it is 11 and 12. And we dividing that by 2. So Oh no. Oh. It should be the other way around. See. That was silly. Anyway, yeah, of course. It's the other way around because um yes. Where are we? Yes, we're in the right place. But it's we not something to be poor. But that's fine. I mean we doing the right thing. Right. So yes, I, I did the opposite, you know, because doing things properly first time is too easy. So <laughs> so yes. So the coordinates we have here um are sixteen per sixteen. So it's double if we use eight per eight. Right, it's because you have two eight rays in sorry, you have two eights in one sixteen, so we need to do double in both cases, right? Okay, so that seems to be correct. Here we init the map, and then there is something that is not happening, and what is not happening is probably because when we update the player, the player is the one that handles the change of the viewport. So we are rendering the top left corner of the map, but that's not the actual, um, that's not where the player is after we change these two things. Actually, we can set the order nicer like this i like it like that right so now we should set the viewport correctly and we should appear in the right place and you know because you need to kill someone when you're testing right let's go yay so that works we are here with the slime so the map link works and obviously just to be completely sure that we are doing things properly, which, you know, we are. We can copy this one, go to the other map, and put it here. And we're going to go to map one. And the tile is going to be, oh, sorry, you're not looking, I'm not showing you the right thing. Sorry about that. Let me show you tile. So basically what I did is I, let's do it again. So this map link, yeah, I just copy one map link from here to here. So I changed the property to map to be map one instead of map two. And then I'm going to grab what are the tiles and it's going to be, see in this corner here, it's going to be 10, one. So, 10, 1, and then let me hide tile so you can see, yeah, so in this way, oh, let's get the key, let's get the laser gun, the blaster or whatever. So we come here and then we can go back. Yay! So I think that's all. Uh, I will work on a different tile probably here. So it looks like there is some connectivity and it doesn't look bad. I think we can, I mean, I'm happy with it. So, oh, this is a, yeah, right. So that works excellent so yeah i think 
with this I have managed to do everything I wanted to do today, which is um, finishing the multiple map support and being able to link maps. Um, so this is looking good. I like it. Um, I might refine this a little bit. And next time, not completely sure what I'm going to do next, uh, but probably keep adding things to the engine. We have already some clues of things I wanted to do looking at the entities here um, so maybe at the start entity are at those terminals the terminals are going to be um, a way you can um, get information about the story of the game so like terminals you can go and read stuff I'm still not completely sure what kind of stuff you're going to read but that will be a way of telling you what's going on so those are two things I could be doing next, um, but uh, we'll see. So thank you again for watching. Um, you remember that if you like it, you can subscribe. Um, um, I don't have a schedule. I mean, you can go to the FAQ and, and read what is this about. Um, I would put a link in the video notes too. And uh, basically, I have sometimes I have more time to work on things uh, so you will see more videos in a week sometimes I have less time but um, I think this has been a very nice next session and again <laughs> not short but you know almost hour and a half um, I was expecting to do this in a short period of time but I'm explaining things so I guess um, uh, as I get better explaining things or maybe I have less things to explain because I can refer you to a previous video maybe things will be faster anyway that's all for today bye